Oh, I sent it away. Give me that, Chris Brown. All right. So we talked about specifying what the response is going to be, JSON at otters. Are there any questions as to what line 7 is doing? Who feels like they understand what line 7 is doing? All right. And this is just literally you're just building the back end here. Right? This is where all like the logic happens and then you're just sending back that response. So to get to your point, right? And that is um, how does it come back? Well, it comes back however I want, right? And that is render and I'm just going to do json otter. So just give me this one otter based on what I queried. And that's what's happening. It doesn't like sort for you somehow. It's just here's a response from the back end that I sent to the front end because somebody made a request and I'm going to give you that response. Aside from readability concerns, is there a reason why we should or why we need to define that instance variable of otters otter? Because when we were rendering the, the HTML files, we needed access to it in the views folder. But could we just do something like render JSON otter not all? Um, you talking about replacing it and do otter dot all? Yeah, that'll work out. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's not the best practice because what you're rendering is um, what I would describe as like a direct hit on the database. Um, this kind of stores it into an instance variable. There's a lot of things that Rails magic will do for it. Actually, I don't think otters dot all might work, um, but having the instance variable will do things um, with the magic of Rails. We can talk offline if you want about that. And then we'll convert it to this active record collection proxy, in which case you can send to the front end. All right. So here, you're just rendering JSON, which you also should always be sending as a status and letting them know, like, hey, it was good to go. That way, any developer can kind of look at it and see, like, hey, if I hit this index action, there was a good status. Cool. Same here. Status. Okay, I think that's right. If it's not, we'll fix it. Are there any questions on this controller? It's nothing wild, right? Will this work if I go here right now and just do otters slash one? Yes. Let's, let's double check that. No. <laughs> How can we fix that? Absolutely, right? What if I did this right now? Wow, what's this beautiful error? You guys miss Rails? JavaScript's like, oh, I don't know what object type object is. And you're like, okay, that wasn't helpful. Otter slash do 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 do. Otter's controller hitting the shell. Bloop, bloop. There is just one. So take a look at the difference between this show and this index. Remember, the index is going to be an array, right? an array-like object. It's an active record collection proxy. And then when you come in and do the one, it's going to give you just the object back. This is what I'm expecting to see. So let's, let's even test that. Let's get crazy. Let's just write some JavaScript right here in the Chrome browser. If I do a fetch to a particular URL, powerful string, the method is get by default. I can chain on a then, low callback action. Right. And this receives what? The response. And then I can, in here, Console log the response just to see. Let's change that to JSON. Like this, yeah. Cool. Oops. Saw that? I thought I was an ID. <sighs> Embarrassing. Promise pending. Cool. Resolved. Object. Interesting. V good. Is this the return value we're expecting? A three year old. Possibly extremely cute, possibly not cute at all. Um, otter with the name of Otterson. Right. Let's go one step further. 
instead of this, we should, uh, okay, I don't want to get into JavaScript hell. You guys been in JavaScript hell yet? What that is is um, if you forget a curly brace somewhere or a parentheses, oh. you have to like scroll through and be like, oh man, I got to find the pair. That one's rough. Oh. Yeah, it's called like JavaScript. Oh, you like it? I, I am not a big fan, and I'm very vocal about it. Yeah, cool. And this will be the parsed JSON. In the event, let's say you have no idea what it is, right? This, this is the parsed JSON now. I can just, bloop. let's see. Let's console log. Let's test everything. Parsed JSON. Oops. And there it is. It is this one object named Otterson, age three, cuteness level 11. Is there any questions as to like how I built this Rails backend? I told it, hey, send back this one object. So on the front end, when I go send the fetch, I parse the JSON, and then I console log it, it's, it's what the backend is sending forward. This is like the bridge. This is the, the connector. This is why Rails is such a powerful backend. Any questions on like what's happening here? No questions? Comments? Concerns? Cool. That being said, where would I want to write the code that I can just start trying to slap it on the DOM? Where would I want to write that code? Yeah, technically correct. I would write it right here, all right? Slap on the DOM here somewhere. This is where I would write the code. Because now I have the object back. And what I can do is I can do something like this, uh, I don't know, otter container. Let's just say I made it already, right? Const otter container equals document.query selector, some div, whatever. And then I can say, hey, yo, check it out. I'm going to say your inner text is now equal to the parsed json dot name. Now the, this div container has like a name of Otterson. That's it's all that's happening here. All right, that's it. Nothing wild. Any questions? And so this is kind of like how the Rails front end back end work. So the cool thing is the fetch. The fetch and the fetch alone, not the thens. The fetch is in fact the network request. What I mean by that is what route do I hit with just this fetch? Do I hit the, the create action, the delete action, the YOLO action? Show. The show. Rails is just regular Rails. Let's check it out. In the controller, if something is wrong here, Oof, embarrassing. <laughs> wow, you caught that quick, huh? Well, if something is wrong here, I can just drop a buy bug, and guess what? Now I'm in the buy bug. The fetch just sends the request. It hits the route, the route hits the controller action, and then Rails takes over. I can continue and say, hey, you know what, cool, I did all my debugging, continue, keep going. Then it finishes the rest of the thing. And now the front end gets it. But the thing is, this fetch, I didn't have any thens whatsoever. It's waiting. It's just kind of paused in this nebulous event loop. And then once the, deep, once the buy bug was done, then the network request finishes. It waits in the event queue, waits until the JavaScript call stack is clear, and then it fires the then callback. Yes, no, maybe so, kind of, a little bit. Okay, questions, comments, concerns, Question feelings? Fetch. What about uh, the fetch? It's a lot of uh, like, 
the question is, instead of putting localhost 3000, can I, I put... Mean, Let's try this, right? Look at this powerful URL that's not localhost 3000. Can open a new tab. Can open the Chrome DevTools. And guess where I can make a fetch request to? The internet. Dot then. What kind of data am I getting back here? Okay. So I can have a callback. Function like that. Too powerful. And all I'm going to do is take the response, and take the response, return it, r.json, bloop bloop, and take the dot then. Oh, that's not going to work. Oops. Whoa. Got way too ahead of myself. All right. And what comes back here? I don't know. Stuff. Right? Oh, stiff. Typo. Cool. Stuff, right? And then let's just console log stuff. Hmm. Let's take a look. Let's pop it out. Look at my dev tools. It's in its own window. Amazing. Too powerful. Cool. Let's see. Data, kind. Data is an object, right? And kind points to listing. Interesting. Wow, I've never seen this before. I wonder what comes next. Might be mod hash, dist, maybe some children. Lucky guess. I wonder what's in children. An array of 25 items. I bet you, will in a bet. The first thing inside the first object is one of these. Hmm. I'm on fire today. I'm gonna hit the lottery next. Does that help at all? Like the fetch just goes to whatever URL you want. Right now we have localhost running as a server that is like simulating being like a live website. Cool. Awesome. Any other questions before we move on? All right, well, let's try this then. I'm on localhost 3000, right? I'm currently on the tab of localhost 3000 otters1. Let me copy this. And let me just go open a brand new tab and go to a website that I don't have an account on, like I don't know, New York Times. I was going to go to like Twitter or something, and then you guys like stalk me. I don't have a Twitter. Cool. Let me just open this bad Johnson up. Let me dock it back. So currently, what domain am I on right now in this tab? Interesting. What domain am I on right now? What is the domain for this particular website that I'm on right now in this active tab? Right. That's right. Vineyard Vines. It's New York Times in case. If you're looking for the correct answer. If I wanted to make a fetch to localhost 3000 from the New York Times, hmm, I got a bunch of errors, right? Maybe I typed that wrong, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go right back to localhost 3000. Anytime you're ready, it's network responses. They take whenever. Oh, it's right, I'm in the buy bug. Embarrassing. Cool. And I do this. Just straight copy and paste it. Works fine. Let's try what's a what's a cool website that you guys like that is definitely like, you know, school appropriate. Neopets. Let's try Neopets. Wow, that, you're on fire today. Oh my god, it's still alive. Oh wow, I was logged in. What? It is dead as all heck, sadly. Aw. Wow, there's a lot. There's a lot of JavaScript that was running. So, okay, slow down, Neopets. I'm gonna have a virus on my work computer, but it was worth it. Risk it. If I try this, that is weird. It should have blocked it. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that was his cure. Let's try GitHub. <laughs> or Googling GitHub, whatever. Interesting. Let me check the settings real quick. Man, Rails, Rails has got me good. Uh, yeah, this is all blocked out. <sighs> Chrome. All right, the point I was trying to make was like exactly this one, and that is you failed to connect. You should not be able to make a request from a different website to your website. Right? So for example, like if you made a really cool website called alleystone.com, and you had like your proprietary data of all your otters and all your secret articles and all your stuff and it's your data in your database should anyone in the world be able to make a fetch to alleystone.com and get data no you're like yo i need to i need to block that right only if ally stone makes a request to ally stone should that be okay? Is that is that sentence like kind of like jive with you all in terms of like Ali Stone should make a request to Ali Stone, and then just be like cool, I'm me, I trust me, noise. If like Sebastian.com made a request to Ali Stone, it'd be like you know what I know you, and I'll let you see just maybe this part of my website. And so there are ways with cross origin, right, Ali Stone. Sebastian.com, EvansWang.com. Don't go to that right now. That may or may not exist. And then, okay, that was that was a that was a mistake. Um, <laughs> we shouldn't be able to make all these requests to Ali Stone, all right? And if we do, the smart thing is Ali should then just block them. Um, <laughs> that kind of like totally failed on me. But the point is, um, it's a cross origin. So there's something called CORS, C O R S. And that just stands for cross origin request sharing. That means that if someone else is making requests from a different origin, cross origin, I can share certain things with them. Oh, stop the mess. I'm trying I'm in the middle of lecture here, Sebastian. Come on now. <laughs> so let's take a look. All right. There is something called Rails course. And you'll see something right here. Oh, 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 oh. First thing. And this is called Rack Course, because remember, Rails is built on Rack, the server, the local server. Look at this amazing documentation, right? This build, uh, passing. When was it last updated? I don't know, two months ago. So actually, the last commit was March 25th, which is actually pretty, pretty recent. Um, this is how it works, right? Gem install Rack Course. Great. Let's do that. I'm gonna go inside my gem file. I think it's somewhere here. Cool. Gem rack cores. Boom. Then what should I do once I have a new gem? All right. All right. Oh. That's why they didn't get blocked. There it is. Because I was stuck in the buy bug. Oh. Wow. I knew I wasn't a crazy loser. So look, boom. Nope. No cores to fetch the resource with cores disabled, right? You've been blocked, right? No access control, allow origin. You can kind of like literally Google it. But this is the problem that comes up. Wow, that buy bug bit me. <laughs> but this is the problem, right? So we house, how, let's, how, let's fix it. Um, let's get out of this and let's bundle. Boop. Great, now it's installed. I should start the server again. I'm definitely going to get rid of that buy bug because that's Stinko Malenko. And now, let's try again. Okay. That is correct. I was like, what the? Cool. Anytime you're ready. Boom. Okay. I'm still getting the error, right? I just simply installed the gem. I'm still getting the error. Cool? Now, let's actually finish the rest of the tutorial. And that is, in your Rails configuration, config 
slash application.rb, right? It should look something like this. Okay, cool. Let's figure this out. Config.middleware, insert before, whatever, rack cores do, allow. So the origins here, right, in this demo is saying you should put the asterisk, the star. What is the asterisk in like programming? Wildcard. It's the wildcard. It means like, hey, allow anything, allow everything. Just kind of dangerous. A little sketch, but let's try it. Risk it. Risk it, brisk it. Was it resources? No. I forgot the file already. Config application. Oh, embarrassing. Uh, let's look in the course file. All right. So, boop, boop, boop. Here I see this. Powerful. All right. So, right now, what is the only origin that is allowed currently? Example.com, right? Terrible. No bueno. Let's do this. <laughs> risk it, risk it. What this is saying is now I've now allowed anyone to make a request to me. I'm going to allow it. I'm not going to block it. I'm going to resource share with any cross origin. So let's take a look. Oh, wait, hold on. Be sure to restart your server when you modify this file. Almost got me. That's a tricky one. Oop. Let's restart the server. And here we go. I'll just try it here. Bananas in pajamas are coming down the stairs. I don't think GitHub likes that very much. Weird. Should be able to fetch it from anywhere. The port was closed. Man, Google's done some weird stuff. I tried refreshing, but we can just keep going. Damn, New York Times bloated. New stuff, new stuff is happening in the world. Cool, let's do this. Ridiculous. Oh man, the New York Times is super secure. All right, either way, the point is, with rack cores, you should be able to hit it from your own personal API. I tried to make a request simulating New York Times. It didn't like that very much. Reddit, on the other hand, is like, yo dog, I got you fam. So you're not seeing like this uh, cross-origin site request blocking, cross-origin resource sharing blocking if you go from a different domain. There's extra security for certain websites, but that's basically what the error is. All right. Are there any questions on like cores, kind of how to fix it, how to avoid it? You would just whitelist specific origins, and this is where freemium comes in. Right, and that is like, great, let's just say I only wanted right, a particular website like Sebastian.com. I would put Sebastian.com. And then that person can do just gets. But if he pays me $10 a month, I will also give him everything. And then you can tell him like what methods are allowed, any particular resource that they're allowed to hit. And this is where that all comes from. You would just literally slap another one right here. Whoops. And then like just throw another one on there. All right. Cool. Oops. I think we're cool. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is something called serializers. And that is most of you will build some sort of application with some sort of user. Right. We learned in mod two, how is the password stored? 
sure. And like the user model, right? Or whatever it is, like a roofer, the roofer model, the dog, the dog model, if your dog can log into this application. And there's some sort of password column in there, right? We use a little password digest, it hashifies it, and it stores it as like this jumbled up string. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, what would actually happen if I actually made the request to this website? Oops. What would actually come across if I hit the API? I get all the attributes, right? I'd get the ID, I'd get the name, I'd get the user, like the email address, and I would get password digest with this like completely unreadable hash. Is that smart to send over? No, so what we wanna start considering is how do we shape our data? And by shape, I mean like, great, I have like these 10 columns in my database, but I only really wanna send seven of those columns. Right, so I'm going to send seven. But what if I have like nested data? Right, I need to be able to send like all the appropriate associations. Let's just say that my Nacho app has gotten fully funded, and now I have like users in there. I have users that eat nachos. I have a relationship, right? Users eat many nachos. The nacho belongs to is like eaten by a user. Whatever. I need to be able to send some of that data if I want it to. And so I can control what gets sent. And that is through what is known as a serializer. So I can do Rails serializer. Have you guys read about this yet? No? All right, cool. Let's do it. Active model serializer. It's great to go right into the source code, right? This is straight from the Rails API. Cool. Let's see. Right now, this is kind of like in beta, which still works. Stable. And let's read this, right? How would I install this? Exactly. All right, well this, little gem file, boop. Boop, boop, and then what should I do? Bundle install, that's right. Let me go bundle install real quick. Start my server back up. Where would I go to look to see how I would use this? Probably have the documentation. But maybe like, how do I start using this? Might be a little tricky to find. But there it is, let's get started. Oh my god, wow. The easiest way to create a new serializer is to generate a brand new resource. But, you can do, this will generate a serializer. You can also generate a serializer for an existing model. Right, right now we have this otter model that already exists. So let's do that. Rails G serializer, and then whoop, the name of the model. So let's try it. Let's kill that server, all right? And it's no longer post, but it is otter. Powerful. And what did it create? The serializer.rb inside app slash serializers. So let's take a look. Inside app. I should have a folder called serializers. There it is. And it built this file for me. Interesting. So all it does is this is attributes ID. Cool. Without doing anything else, let's kind of like see what that did. That's kind of weird. But let's do it. I go right back to my application. And if I refresh, I just get the ID. I've changed the shape of my data. So I can probably do something like, hmm, can I send the name? And I just send the name and ID. That way I'm not sending all the other extra stuff, like created at, updated at, password digest, and the things that maybe I just don't want to send forward. Right? Like me personally, I run, I've worked on a bunch of apps where the employee ID is stored on there. Um, it's like hashified, but it's basically your, serial, your social security number. Right? That's also something I don't want to send forward. So I'd wrap everything in a serializer and send only the data that I want to go forward. 
Meaning if I were to send a fetch request to localhost 3000 otters1, what should I get back as an object ultimately after I've parsed the JSON? Mm -hmm. Right now, if I send a fetch request to otters1 and I've parsed the JSON, what should I get back? That's right, an object with just two key values, an ID and a name. So Rails is really powerful and it's really helpful. But what I want to do is I want to talk about this create action, this post super fast, and then I will talk about callbacks. All right, you guys want a break? All right, cool. Take a five minute break. Let's talk about this post action, right? So first thing I need to do, right, if I'm trying to do a post action, let's say I want to create a brand new otter. Create a brand new otter, right? Um, say again? Oh, otter.new, sorry. Um, yeah, otter.new. Um, but what we need is we need to be able to like have Rails sort of like create this thing. So what controller action normally is associated with creation? <laughs> Very good. Very good. And then this is looks like what? Add otter. Does otter params exist right now? Okay. Okay. Should I over optimize? Or should I make it work? Make it work. Let's first make it work before we make it sexy. So it looks like we're kind of like in this weird place right now, right? The first thing I want to do is top white bug. I want to test. Can I hit this create action right now? That's correct. I cannot. So, what is the route for this create action? Post slash otters. Is there anything else? Like make? Okay. Okay. Just testing you all. Very good. Passed. Congratulations. Otters. <laughs> this create action. So all I have to do is really just hit this create action. So let's do that. Um, I can do literally from anywhere. So fetch, oop, dang. Oh, bless up, all right? And so we talked about like the second argument for fetch a little bit, but let's dive into it. Bloop, 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 bloop. You guys rather see in the JS file? One person, that's all I need, really. Cool. Sure, whatever. Um, let's just make one. Uh, I believe it's in. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it, it sh there shouldn't be much JavaScript here because there's no front end here. So we'll just make one, all right? Watch this. Bloop. Bloop, bloop. Um, this is not best practice. We should be making a separate front end. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Ready? Cool. LS. So they have an article, right? That's the back end. And then we have, let's make a directory called article front end. Powerful. No, I'm just kidding. Just front end is fine. So let's seed into article. And let's touch some files, right? We need some HTML. We need some like starter files, some like index.html. Um, we also need index.js. Oh, am I? All right, cool. Let's move index.html to a folder up called article front end. Boom. Like that? Power of the command line. 
should be there. Yes. Move is hard. Move is a tricky one to do. I know. I like that. All right. And let's touch another file. Next.js, right? Nothing wild. Let's open those bad Johnsons up. And here we go. Uh, you like that? All right. Awesome. Powerful. If you just put like HTML and hit tab, it builds like a really crappy skeleton. Um, so much so that it doesn't even pull in my JavaScript files. Embarrassing. Cool. I think that's wrong. Source. And that's going to be index.js. So without further ado, let's test to see if that even works. All right, index.js, first thing I want to do is console log. Did it load? Let's find out. Uh, open index.html. And, and it did. Noise. Money. All right, so let's actually do this, right? Let's like write some JavaScript. All right, there's, we have some HTML in here. We have like a completely front end repo. You saw me build it from scratch with like some boo-boos. Right, and this is it. This is the front end. All right, let's make a fetch to uh, our back end. Right, and that is yeah. All right, I'm, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just gonna rip it from here. Oof, yes, give me that first brown. Boom! Wow, wowzers! Great, and it needs a second argument. So let's talk about the second argument. It's one object. And where can I go reference how to write this? The MDN, right? It's such a good, powerful resource. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm going to actually go through what this is. And that is, you have a fetch. Cool. There's a URL there. All right, the method is post. That's super easy. Mode cores. I really won't get too much into it, but you can specify whether you have cores or no cores or if it's the same origin. Um, and that's going to affect, again, like how your backend is set up. And it should match some of the core settings in there. Um, we won't really need it or use it. This is if you want to cache this request and save it for later. We're not going to get into that. Credentials, again, same origin. This has to do with um, like auth. Headers, however, is important. So let's take rip this. Oop. We have, I'm going to show you in case, because a lot of times people panic and like, oh my god, I forgot how to write a fetch in the code challenge. I'm going to be like, cool. I'm going to show you exactly how I would write it and we could time it. I will finish before three o'clock. So all of six minutes while talking. I need to change the method in here. That's important. Boom. If I'm doing a put or a patch, that's it. If I'm doing a delete, some of you have done this already. Wow, right? Post, cool. Then we need headers. Watch this. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. Content type, right? In your fetch, you will be sending over data to your backend. You're going to send data to your backend. But what type of data will you be sending? What is the type of content that you are sending? Well, you're going to send from your application some JSON. Are there questions on what this is? Content type, application JSON. No, right? Let's take a look at the Rails. OK, that's not it. Let's take a look at the Rails. What type of data will the Rails send me? What will the Rails respond with? JSON. So here, if I'm going to receive data, I need to accept it. You can put this in a string if you want to, but you don't have to. Like if you want it, could, it could look like this. And you're going to receive what? You're going to get JSON back from the Rails application. So content type from the fetch is what you're sending. It's going to be JSON. And what you're receiving is JSON. These are what are known as MIME types. There are different types. MIME types. 
And guess who has all of them? My good friend, the Mozilla Developer Network. Um, as I've alluded to in the Ajax lecture, that sometimes you might be getting XML and not JSON. Here are some of the MIME types. All right, look, you can just straight ask for JavaScript. Eh, some of these are deprecated. Some of them will be text files, right? But what if you make a fetch request and it gives you back a picture? What do you think the accept might change into? Application JSON? Image. Cool? So what I send, what I get back. Let's go back to using fetch. Cool. This redirect is not super important. Refer also, I don't really want to kind of get into. What I want to talk about is this body. This is the payload. This is the data that you'll actually send over that will come across as params in your rail server. So let's just straight rip it like a G. Ready? Bam. Bam. Whoops. Cool. So I can send anything. This is the data. This is an object. I can send any key value pair, right? Like chair, kids. Let's go back. Cool. I'm going to post to otters and I'm going to send chair kids. Let's take a look at what happens in this fetch. Remember, this fetch, is it being executed right now, yes or no? Is it being executed right now, yes or no? Yes, fetch is being invoked. So the second I load this file, fetch will be invoked, and it'll send the request. And it'll send it to slash otters with a post. Let's take a look at my Rails backend. That's not it. Take a look at my Rails backend. In my routes, I have a post to slash otters which is going to hit my create action, it's just regular Rails. And what should it do? What's the first thing it does if somebody hits a create action? Drops the buy bug. So that means that on the refresh, on the refresh of this, it'll send the fetch. It hits post to slash otters, which in my Rails backend is the otters controller create action. So. Trigger that refresh. Interesting. Fail to fresh. Oops. Oh, that was the IDE. Oh, did I add the extra slash? Oh, I did. Bloop. Hmm. What is the junk? Can't assume anything. Can't assume anything. Can't assume nothing. Interesting. Let's take a look at this whole fetch. Copy it into my console. Interesting. It's pending. Cool. Oh. I hit the buy bug, I know. And it sent back the response that it aired out. Alright. Anyways, I hit I hit it here, right? Hit it. Oh, that's right. The Rails server is not running. No wonder. You, you, you guys should laugh, right? Like, don't be upset. Don't be like, oh, this sucks. Because it's good to watch me suffer. Because <laughs> I'm serious. It really is. Because I promise you. That's not about suffering tenfold. I promise you. I need you to think through how I'm thinking through it. And that is like, wait, why is this not working? What is going on? And checking stuff. So it's actually really good that you see me. So when I see some of you are like, oh. so like, trust me, you're gonna be like, I'm glad he done goofed. Cool. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's get stuck in the buy bug. Cool. Uh, bloop. Hit the debugger, and I'll just continue. Bloop. All right. Now I'm in the create, as promised. All right. So what was the body inside my fetch? There it is. 
what I send in the body is actually what's going to come across in the params. Fair? Sorry, 301. That's it. So it's like, oh man, I have 90 minutes on this code challenge and I forgot how to write fetch. Fetch MDN, taking no more than two minutes. It's going to be okay. No need to panic. All right. Is, is chair kids useful to us though? Like if I'm trying to make otter.create, am I using chair kids anywhere here? No. So what do I actually need though? What do I need? I need name, age, cuteness level. Those are the three things that I need. So how can I change my body so I send name, age, and cuteness level? Hmm. Can we start there? Name. Hmm. Oh, okay. Wow. That is powerful. How, how old do otters get? I don't know. I don't know. One is probably still pretty cute, right? What is the name of this otter? Chair kids? All right. We'll, we'll put a very mysterious random name like PA Rivers. Cool. Father Rivers, whatever. Sure. All right. So this is what's going to come across the params. So we'll try again. Let's continue because it does nothing. Oh, that's all right. Let's do this. Let's get rid of the debugger and my front end. Bloop, trash. And I'll just simply refresh again. That sends the fetch request. I hit the buy bug. And now I have name, age, and cuteness level. Can I use... All right, let me blow this up for you. Can I do otter.create with params? Right, remember the strong param stuff, right, will bite you. But we can do, and we, we can hack it together, it's kind of janky, but we can do params at a key of, cool. Right? And because I have absolutely no validations, like the dirtbag that I am, and there it is. Cool. Um, but what are otter params when we build the strong params? What do they look like? What do they look like? Okay. Yeah, something like Rams.require. Okay, yeah, that one. And then permit the. Oh man, Ugh, I want to write bad code in front of you. It's gross. And then the cuteness level. And then we can use the otter params. Because now we fully understand them. The problem is params that require otter. What does this assume? that you have a key of otter inside your params. All right? That inside your params, there's a key of otter that points to another hash that has name, age, and cuteness level in there. Well, we know how we build the params, right? We know that we build it just like this, and that somehow this whole thing needs to be inside an otter hash. All right, what do we name this? Oops. What do we name it? Otter. So if in the body I put otter, that is its entire object, the whole thing would be nested inside an otter key. It's all just manipulating hashes, right? This is basically hash get ball. Day one, mod one, right? I have, a, I have a key and objects, and I need to get them. It's a 
all coming together. And this is it. And now your strong params will work. Are there any questions as to what the body is in your fetch request for your post? How to manipulate it, how to send it to your Rails backend, how to create your Rails backend, the arguments inside the second object inside fetch, like the second argument for fetch. All right, the questions on method, headers, or body. Cool. What is content type application JSON? You're letting the back end know, hey, the content of this, the payload in the body, will be JSON. All right. We went over a lot today. Serializers, cores, by bug debugger. <laughs> it's rough. Body and how it affects the params. So, yeah. If I want to make the otter name dynamic, how do I do that? Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm going to get to that right now. Cool. All right. So the question was, how do I make this dynamic? All right. Well, let's think. Where does this data come from if a user is saying, I want to make a brand new otter, and I'm going to type in the name somewhere, and then I'm going to click submit what HTML tag might that be form right we're getting somewhere I think you could see it there we go do we need action get out of here I'm gonna prevent that default anyway post trash all right and then what do I need I need some inputs and what is this going to be Sure, whatever, right? Name, boop. What else? Maybe age, boop. And, wow. Let it go. We'll submit action. Powerful. Get out of here. Ah, I probably need, I probably need value. And that is like, make that otter. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Okay, it's taking me a little bit. It's taking me a little bit to figure out where you guys are at. Give me a little bit. Cool. And then I want to actually send back this response super fast. Boop, boop, boop. All right, cool. We'll talk about some stuff. If I refresh, I'll see make that otter in this extremely well designed form with a lot of CSS on it. And you're all obviously jealous. No big deal. Um, cool. We know what we do from here already. This was, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Stuff typed text. How do I grab this stuff? How do I get this information? Yeah, query selector, right? Perfect. So let me do that. Oh, man. Risk it, brisket. We got to move a little faster. Here we go. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, we're, we're going we're gonna to move through, all right? Look, this, this input, is there a unique value in here? How can I grab it? What? No? Cool, let's add an ID. Awesome. You like that speed? All right, and that is going to be what? The otter name? Great, awesome. In JavaScript, I can probably do something like const otter name. All right, I don't want to use that. Equals to? All right, and then otter name is what? Almost there. It's an input, right? It's an input. Cool, 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 cool. Huh. Let's make that dynamic. Inner text? It's the one. Oh, 
Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. 10 points to go from the Right? And that's basically how you make a dynamic, right? Um, but there's more to it than that because otter.name.value, mm, that's a little weird. Do I want to send this post request right when the page loads? No, that'd be crazy. Like, like pulling the value, it's always going to send empty string. So I probably need to wait until the form submits. So let's look at this form, right? Cool. Make oh, ID equals to, right? Make otter form. Boom. Well, this uh, const otter form equals to boop, boop, boop. Make otter form. And then on the otter form, I can and it is going to be on the scroll. Now we're getting there. Cool. Boom, 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 boom. This is going to receive the event. Do I want that form to submit or do I want JavaScript to submit? Great. I want JavaScript to submit, so I will prevent the form from submitting by itself. And on that form submit, I want to send the fetch request. So once the user hits submit, the regular HTML form doesn't do it, stops that, and then I write my own powerful JavaScript to make sure it submits, passing in dynamic values, and actually creating. Now, how do I slap it on the DOM once it's done? That's the question. And so I can probably do right here, then, oh, function action. Oh, wait. That's not it. That's not right. The fetch is here. <sighs> Almost got me. I've been stuck in JavaScript hell for a long time. Cool. This then is going to receive what? Some sort of. Cool. So some sort of response, right? I can take that response. And then what I can do, function, and I can slap it on the DOM right here. Now that the object comes back, let's console log, right, what came back. So remember, with the add event listener of null. Oh, why is this happening? Super fast. Where's my script tag? I'm just going to hack it super fast. You can't hack it. Cool. All right, I could put a DOM content loaded, but right now, um, risk it, brisket. Here we go. All right, will it send the fetch right now on load? No. I have to type some stoof, right? Uh, notice I didn't query select the other two because I'm kind of lazy. I hit make that otter and I got the response back. I got it back because I specified in my create to send the otter I just created back. What if the otter doesn't get created and there are validations? That if the otter doesn't get created, what should I do, right? I have options here. And then it just becomes regular Ruby, regular Rails, your regular old backend code. And that is like, hey, if the otter.save, otter.valid, render otter, else render some error message. And that's basically what's happening. Right? It's an object with a key of error. It's all just regular Rails. So now I want to talk about one thing before this computer dies. Oh, super fast, come on. Okay, and that is cool. Here I'm passing in the otter.value, right? When I try to slap it on the DOM right here, this is before or after the response comes back. Before or after the response comes back? Yes, after the response comes back, which means that 
I officially waited. I sent the fetch. The data came back, and then I slapped it on the DOM. That means that I don't actually trust whether or not, when I first sent the fetch, I didn't trust whether or not the database updated. I wait until the response comes back, and then I slap it on the DOM. So far, so good. That means that I'm pessimistically rendering. I do not trust the fact that the server, in fact, updated. I will wait until the server tells me, hey, this thing came back, and then I update the DOM. Yes, no, yes. Cool. Where am I getting the otter name, actually? Am I hard coding it, or am I pulling it from somewhere? I'm pulling it from the form. If, however, I decide to update the DOM here, do I have the data that I need? Do I have access to the otter name right here? Do I have access to the otter name right here? Yes, I have access to the otter name. I can start slapping it on the DOM right here and send a fetch request. This means that I'm basically updating the DOM regardless of whether or not the response from the server was good. I basically said, look, I'm going to update the DOM. I'm going to send this fetch. I'm going to trust that this response is good. This is known as optimistically rendering. So pessimistically rendering, again, waits until the response comes back. It's fine. Waits until the response comes back. Or I could do it outside the fetch, in which case it is an optimistic render. Because it, I don't really care about the response from the server. I'm just going to update the DOM. And that's kind of the difference. Now, to your point, 